Hello again team, it's Jess or Jessica in and welcome back for another video. Today we are setting up for January 2022 in my everyday bullet journal. Our theme for the month ahead is mountains, though I feel it kind of ended up being more like a lumberjack flannel theme. I'm not mad, I think it looks cute, but before we get into setting up those pages, we're first going to have a look at how December was going. As you'll remember from my December plan with me video, our theme for December was gingerbread men, using that classic Christmas color palette of green, red, and white. Of course, because they're gingerbread men, we also had to use some brown. And while I really liked this theme, I thought it turned out really cute. I didn't really use my journal all that much in December. It was very much one of those instances where life gets super busy and thus I neglect using my journal. This meant that my habit tracker did not get filled in, I barely touched my meal log, I didn't really set up any weeklies, I just used some brain dumps, but I still felt that it was worth sharing that you don't have to be 100% consistent with your journal to still find it valuable. Although not so pretty to look at, my final brain dump page has been pretty useful, and after this we have just one more blank spread before we're into my back of journal pages. With this one all filled up, it is of course into my new everyday journal, which is the teal colored A5 Secret Vine Journal from Archer and Olive. You may have already seen some of the setup videos that I have for this one, including my start of journal pages and also my teacher journal pages. But without further ado, let's get into the January setup. As I mentioned before, for January, I very much wanted to go with a mountains theme, but I wanted to make sure that I did this differently to how I did my last mountains theme. That one was for back in June 2020, and was more of like a moon and mountains theme. Although I super loved the combination of having navy and gold in that one, I wanted to make sure that for this monthly setup I was doing something a little bit different, which is why I opted in to have a red, black and gold colour palette. I found that with the different markers that I have, I actually don't really seem to have a true red colour. All of them seem to be a little bit too dark, or a little bit too light, or a little bit too muted. Thankfully though, I do have this rainbow notepad from Archer and Olive, which has a really vibrant red paper. The cool part about this is that it's also dot grid, so I could use it to make a flannel pattern. I'm not gonna lie, this took way longer than I initially anticipated, and I'm pretty sure that my hand is never going to forgive me. But to draw the pattern in, effectively all you have to do is start by drawing a whole bunch of little boxes, which are all separated by one dot grid space, you can then colour those boxes in black, and then between each of the boxes, you put in a diagonal line pattern, making sure that all of your diagonal lines are in the same direction. In theory, it's super simple, because, you know, it is, it's just some boxes and some lines, but oh my lord, this took such a long time. If I ever do a pattern like this again, I'm honestly just going to find a reference image online and then print it off because I seriously spent like multiple hours drawing out all of the paper that I needed for this setup. Although I think it looks super visually effective, I'm pretty sure that I do not ever want to put my hand through that again. For the quote page we're working on here at the moment though, I wanted a quote that was going to kind of sum up my feelings towards the start of the new year. Something kind of related to putting plans in motion and getting to working on new goals and that kind of stuff. The one that I decided to go with is from JP Morgan, which says, The first step towards getting somewhere is to decide you're not going to stay where you are. As I said, I really just thought this was kind of fitting for the new year, and the idea of actually getting started on making progress on my goals. As I typically like to do, for all of the lettering in this setup, for the quote here and the headings on other pages, I opted to use the same style. The font this one was inspired by is Rainier by Kimmy Kirkwood, I've got a link to the font in the description box below, along with any of the equipment that I used in today's setup, and also any other related videos. I really think that I'm going to have to add this font and also the font that I used for my start of journal setup to my long term collections journal, because I found myself referring back to the website multiple times over when I was doing my lettering, so it'd be good to have a reference for the font in my long term collections journal. In terms of timing, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, our quote page took about 12 minutes, but this doesn't include the sketching in time, idea generation time, or the time taken to draw out the tartan pattern. Because if we include that, it took way longer. <laughs> because I made the tartan strips three dot grid spaces wide, these could just be replaced with washi tape, which would certainly have taken less long than drawing it all out by hand. 
Onto the other side of the spread though, and we have the cover page, which took about seven and a half minutes. Again, not including decorating the red paper. Here you can see the mountain theme coming in. So we have a doodle of three mountains, with a larger one in the front, two in the back, some clouds, and also the sun. Or maybe the moon. Along the bottom of the mountain doodle, I also added in some pine trees, just with some simple line work. So one line up the middle for the trunk of the tree, and then just adding some diagonal lines on either side of this. I did appreciate how simple this decoration was. I knew that considering how long the flannel pattern had taken me, I didn't want to have a super time-consuming doodle on my front cover. I did consider adding some stippling to the mountains, but I ended up just going in and using a light grey Tombow to add some shadowing. Sticking in the January flannel banner underneath this, you can see I've already lettered in January in that same font just using the gold acrylograph pen. I did actually make a mistake on this tartan pattern, so let me know in the comments if you can spot the mistake. Thankfully it is a smaller mistake, so I don't think it's super noticeable. And as I typically do with small mistakes, I decided just to leave it in because it would probably draw more attention to the mistake if I tried to fix it. With the quote and cover pages finished though, it's time to flip over and get onto the monthly log. You can see that I've already stuck in a piece of paper with that flannel pattern and run some black washi tape up the side of it just to make the edge look a little bit more finished. But to actually draw in our monthly log, we're going to start with the calendar grid. As I typically like to do, these are six squares across by six squares down, but something a little bit different for me is that instead of having four days of the week on the left hand side and three on the right, I've done this the other way around. There was no real reason for the change, I just wanted something a little different, and it's the kind of change that isn't so dramatic that it feels uncomfortable. As you'll have seen, for all of the black line work I'm doing in today's video, I'm using the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. I recently bought a new set of these because mine were getting a little blunt, because I'm a little bit heavy-handed, but it is so nice to work with a new pen. For the mountains at the bottom here, I'm using the S size, or the small tip, which is a 0.3mm tip, whereas for the grid of the calendar I used the M size, which is a 0.7mm tip. When it came to doing the flannel pattern, for the little lines on that one I used the 0.1mm tip, or the extra small size. Although you can totally get by just having one black pen in one size, I do find having different sizes to be quite helpful, especially for different things. I know I personally prefer to have thicker lines for my calendar grid, whereas when it comes to writing, I typically like to use the 0.3 size, or the small size pen. This spread was the most time consuming of the setup we have today, coming in at about 16 minutes, but of course this doesn't include the time taken to do that flannel pattern, which was also the most time consuming of the flannel patterns I did, just because it is the largest section of the pattern. To bring in some more of the red from our colour palette, to number the calendar I used my Statler Triplus Fineliner in red, and then the monthly log was finished. I do have that blank section at the top next to the January title, which I might go and fill in, but for now I'm okay with it being left blank. Flipping over, and we're onto a not so typical page for me, but hopefully one that's going to become a staple in my journal, this is my monthly challenge page. For 2022, I'm again going to be trying my hand at completing monthly challenges. So in particular, health-related challenges where I'm doing something each day of the month. For January, the challenge that I've decided to go with, and it certainly will be a challenge for me, is to do at least 20 minutes of exercise every day. To track my work on this challenge, I've cut out another red piece of paper in the shape of the January calendar. For each day that I complete the challenge, I'll be able to fill in the relevant part of the mini calendar, and for any days that I don't, I'll leave it blank. With the challenge being daily exercise, of course there are different ways that one could exercise. So at the bottom, I'm putting in what I'm calling a challenge menu, or effectively a key to denote the different types of exercises that I may do. Each of these will be in that flannel pattern again, but instead of just having black, I'll be using different colours to represent different types of exercise. At the time of filming this, I haven't decided what those exercises are going to be, or what colours I'm going to use, but it'll probably end up being the black, maybe a grey, a white and a gold just to keep everything in that same kind of colour palette. In terms of timing, the monthly challenge page took five and a half minutes to set up, but again, this doesn't include the flannel pattern. It also doesn't include the cutting out of the calendar grid. So with that in mind, probably closer to about 10 minutes. After this, we're onto the quickest page of this setup, coming in at about three minutes, because it's really just a collection of headings. 
but this is my action steps page. Effectively what this is going to be is a space for me to write out any of the action steps that I want to action in January in order to work on my goals. I have two main goals for 2022, one of them being physical health related and the other one being career related. On this action steps page I have a section to write down any one-off or monthly action steps, so things that I want to do once or once at least during the month, a space to write out any weekly action items or things that I want to do on a weekly basis, and then any daily actions or effectively habits that I want to build. While I won't be tracking the daily actions here, and I'm not setting up a monthly habit tracker in this setup, what I'm instead going to be doing is trying to track those daily actions on my weekly spreads. So I want the action steps page that I'm setting up here to act as a reference for what those daily actions are. Therefore, when I come to set up my weekly spreads, I can refer to this action step page so that I can populate the habit tracker that I put on there. Hopefully that all made sense. But the general gist is that on my action steps page, I will track the one-off and monthly tasks, I will track the weekly tasks, but I won't be tracking the daily tasks. Those instead are going to be tracked in habit trackers on my weekly spreads. Flipping over though, and we are on to my meal log. Although I didn't fill in my meal log for December, I do know that utilizing this is going to be really helpful when it comes to my physical health goal. Like meal logs that I've done previously, instead of just tracking dinner or just tracking lunch and dinner, this one has four columns across the spread, one for each of breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Although it is a very simple layout, it is quite effective. I am hoping at some point in the new year to kind of revamp this spread a bit, make it a little bit more robust in terms of the information that I'm tracking. But for January, I figured that a tried and true method was fine. To make the tracker a little bit more user friendly, I'm going in with my light grey Tombow and just highlighting every second line for each of the columns. The washi tape that I put down doesn't stay there for long, it was just there to make sure that I didn't overextend the lines and also got nice crisp edges to the columns. To finish off the spread though, I just added in the headers for each of the columns and then the meal log was finished. In terms of timing, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, this one took about 13 and a half minutes. Again, not including the flannel pattern. I would very much like to get myself a flannel washi tape because I actually really like the flannel pattern, I just don't want to have to draw it out again. Up next we have what is going to be my monthly review or reflection spread. This is something that I'm bringing back with changes for 2022. Previously I super enjoyed putting monthly reflections into my journal. I used them pretty consistently in 2019, but then fell off with them and just couldn't remember to fill any in that I did make in 2020. I did try to have one or two in 2021, but I found that one of the biggest issues that I have with my reflection spread is that I don't set it up when I set up the rest of my monthly pages. Typically I'd like my reflection page to be at the end of the month, so after all of my weekly or daily pages, but once the month is underway I would never end up setting up the reflection page, or if I did leave space for it and maybe wrote in a header. I just never found the time to actually set up any of the sections that I wanted in the reflection page. To try and combat this, as you can see, I am setting up a reflection page as part of this setup, with pre-allocated sections that I can fill in as we go through January. As I said, this one has been brought back with changes, so there are some differences in the sections that I'm using, one of which in particular is the one at the top on the left, which is my am I satisfied with my progress this month section. So for each of the weeks in January, weeks 1 to 4, I'm going to be rating how I feel I'm tracking with my goals out of 5. So 1 being I'm doing terribly, and 5 being I'm making great progress. The other sections I'm including are a space to write down what my monthly challenge completion was, so how many days of the month I actually managed to complete the challenge, my rating for Rachel and Mine's book club book, which for January is The Lost Apothecary. I do need to make sure I go and pick up a copy of the book before the month starts, because I'm not so super great at reading as it is, and if I don't have the book when the month starts, there is probably a 90% chance I won't end up finishing it before our deadline. If you hadn't heard about Rachel and Mine's reading challenge for 2022, I talk more about it in the video I did for her journal setup, which is linked in the description box below. But in terms of other sections we have on this page, I also have a place to list out my accomplishments, a place to write out what helped or hindered me in terms of achieving my goals, a space to write out ideas on how to make more progress in the following month, a space to write out the things I'm still working on, 
And then over on the right, we have the what in the world section, so a place to write in world events. A memory section for any personal memories, so like social outings, anything in particular that happens. A place to write out the things I'm looking forward to and anything I'm nervous about. And then also a section at the bottom to write out any media consumed. So TV shows watched, books read, that kind of stuff. Question of the day for you guys though, do you use monthly reflections in your journal? This is something that I'm really excited to get back into in 2022. And I'm hoping that this layout works for me, but if it doesn't, I will certainly be tweaking it for my February setup. For the final flip through of the pages that we've set up today though, we have my quote and cover page, with the cover page featuring those mountain doodles, the calendar style monthly log, which again has those mountains along the bottom, my monthly challenge page for my 20 minutes of daily exercise challenge, and on the right we have the action steps page for the different things that I want to do in order to make progress on my goals. We have the meal log with a space for breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks. And then the updated monthly reflection page. I'm not gonna lie, I am super chuffed with how all of the spreads in this setup turned out. Even though it was time consuming, that flannel pattern really speaks to me. And I'm hoping to add some more mountain decorations when it comes to my weekly setups. I'd love to know what theme you guys are doing for January, and as always team, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and if you hadn't already and felt so inclined, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. Until next time, bye!